Today, we will be solving a nice question related to two block systems on an inclined plane with friction. Imagine pushing a heavy box on the floor. If the box does not move, the floor is resisting your push, and that resistance is called friction. Friction always tries to stop your motion or prevent sliding. The stronger the surfaces press together, the stronger the friction. This pressing force is called the normal force, and we will write it as N. There are two main types of friction, static friction and kinetic friction. Static friction happens when the object is not moving, but you are trying to push or pull it. The object resists the push, and the friction force adjusts itself so that the object does not move. This force can be anywhere from zero up to a maximum, and the maximum is determined by multiplying the coefficient of static friction, a constant which we write as mu s with the normal force n. If you push lightly, the static friction force, or fs, exactly matches your push, or the applied force f, so the box does not move. Only when your push f is equal to or more than mu s multiplied by n will the object start to slide. Finally, Kinetic friction happens when the object is already moving. Once sliding begins, the friction force becomes constant and is determined by multiplying the coefficient of kinetic friction mu k with the normal force n. Kinetic friction always acts opposite to the direction of motion, trying to slow the object down. Usually, mu k is smaller than mu s, which is why it is easier to keep an object moving than to start it moving. Now to solve problems related to the inclined plane with an angle theta, using a bit of trigonometry, you should know that the force of gravity can be split into two components, one along the plane, which is mg sine theta, and one perpendicular to the plane, which is mg cos theta. So, the normal force acting on a block resting on the plane or moving along the plane only equals mg cos theta. Note that g acts in the downward direction, and we assume up the incline as positive direction. Now, if this is clear, then we will start solving a challenging two-block inclined plane problem with friction. We have two blocks on a 30-degree inclined slope. The top block, small m, is 2 kilograms, and the bottom block, capital M, is 3 kilograms. A force F of 20 newtons is pushing the top block up the slope like this. The bottom of the large block is frictionless, meaning there is no friction between the incline and the bottom block. However, there is static friction between the two blocks, trying to keep them together, with a coefficient mu s one of 0 0.4 and kinetic friction coefficient mu k one is 0 0.3. Our first problem is to find whether both the blocks stick together and move or whether they will slip against each other. Then find the common acceleration if they move together or individual acceleration if they slip. Now in order to solve this, first we will assume both the blocks move together and we will find the common acceleration. So we will treat the two blocks as a single system with total mass mt as two plus three or five kilograms. Now the forces acting along the incline are the applied force F, which acts up the incline and the downward pull or the total mass, five times g times the sine of 30 degrees. Substitute the values and you get 24.5 newtons. Now, applying Newton's second law of motion for the system along the incline, the net force acting on the combined block is the push F, or 20 newtons minus the gravity pull down, or 24.5 newtons. The result is minus 4.5 newtons. The negative sign means the overall force is actually pulling them down the slope. To find the common acceleration A, we divide this net force by the total mass of 5 kilograms. We get minus 0 0.9 meters per second squared. This negative value simply means the whole system would be accelerating down the incline if they do not slip and they move together.
But now we will check the conditions for slipping. This is where the real understanding of your theoretical concept will be tested. We will zoom in on the small 2 kilogram top block and ask, how much friction is required from the bottom big block to keep the small block accelerating at that common rate of minus 0.9 meters per second squared? We will label it as FR. This small block has three forces, the 20 Newton push F up, its own gravity pulled down, which will be mg sine theta, or 2 times g times sine 30 will be half or 9.8 newtons down, and the friction force FR required that is helping it to stick to the bottom block. We will initially assume FR is acting down the incline. You don't need to worry about the direction because, if it turns out to be negative, then it is acting in the opposite direction, that is, up the incline. If the small block moves at the common acceleration a, its net force must be its m times a, or 2 times minus 0.9, which is minus 1.8 newtons. So f, or 20 minus gravity, pull down, or 9.8 minus the required friction, fr, must equal the net force, or minus 1.8. Solving for fr gives us 12 newtons. This means the friction between the blocks needs to be 12 newtons acting down the incline on the small block to keep them moving together. You can take the direction of FR up the incline as well. This way you get F, or 20 plus FR, minus 9.8 equals minus 1.8. Solving for FR gives minus 12, which gives the same result. Next we will calculate the absolute maximum static friction F max that can exist between the two blocks. This maximum force is the static friction coefficient, mu s, 1 or 0 0.4, multiplied by the normal force n between the blocks. Normal force, as mentioned, is given as mg cos theta. Now here comes the main trick. We will only use the mass of the top block for this normal force calculation. This is because the normal force N represents how hard the two surfaces are pressing together, perpendicular to the incline. This force is solely caused by the component of the top block's weight, pushing down onto the bottom block, right? The mass of the bottom block, or 3 kilograms, does not press the two inner surfaces together. Its weight only affects the normal force between itself and the inclined plane. Therefore, the normal force N is correctly found by taking the top block's mass M times gravity G times the cause of 30 degrees. This gives us 16.97 newtons, which we then multiply by the static friction coefficient 0.4 to get the maximum possible friction F max which is approximately 6.79 newtons. Now is the time to compare. Required friction, FR, is 12 newtons to keep both the blocks moving together. Maximum possible static friction, F max, is 6.79 newtons. Since the required friction is much greater than the maximum possible friction, the static friction is not strong enough to keep them together. So this means they will slip. Therefore, finally, since they slip, we will calculate their individual accelerations. When they slip, the friction force between the blocks is the kinetic friction, the F slip, which is the same as mu K, 1 times this normal force, or 0.3 times 16.97 or 5.09 newtons. First, let us calculate the acceleration of the top block. This friction F slip acts down the slope on the small block. This is because the small block is pulled up relative to the big block or this surface. Therefore, this kinetic friction will try to stop this motion and will act downward. So we write F, or 20 minus gravity pull, or 9.8 minus F, slip, or 5.09 equals small, M, or 2 times AM, which is the acceleration of the top block. So, after solving this simple equation, we get AM as 2.56 meters per second squared.
This means that this block will accelerate up the incline. Now let us calculate the acceleration of the bottom block. Listen carefully. When the top block slides relative to the bottom block, kinetic friction at the interface comes into play. By Newton's third law, the friction that acts down the slope on the top block acts equally and in the opposite direction or up the slope on the bottom block. This friction is the only force trying to pull the bottom block up, as there is no external force directly applied to it. At the same time, the bottom block has its own weight component along the incline pulling it down. So the net force on the bottom block is therefore the friction up, or 5.09, minus its gravity component down, which will be mg sine theta, or 3g times half, or 14.7. Dividing this net force by the mass of the bottom block, or 3, gives its acceleration, which comes out minus 3.2 meters per second squared. This means this block moves down the incline despite the friction pulling it up. This shows clearly how friction can try to pull a block one way, but the block's weight may still dominate, determining the actual motion. This way, we can solve questions related to two block systems on an inclined plane with friction. If this is clear, then try to solve this problem on your own, and let me know your answer in the comments. If you are not able to solve this, then just comment TBP for this two block problem, and I will solve it in some other video, only if this video gets 5,000 likes. Goodbye!